All right, cool. So um, I'm not going to start with the opening scripture because I want to get straight to it. And I'm going to read a scripture in the middle um, that's going to kind of bring it all together. So I'm going to start with like just an individual scripture, Proverbs 21. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is a brawler. And whoever is led astray by it is not wise. And I have over this scripture, good verse wise. There's a lot of good people in the world, wouldn't you guys say? There's a lot of people who do good in the world. Charity, giving, time, working in the community, all these different things. And we have a lot of good people in the world. Obviously with the news, it shows us that there's a lot of bad people in the world. But when we really think about it and really get down to the nitty gritty, we have a lot of good people in the world. God has not just called us to be good people. But God has called us to be wise and not only be wise, but live our life with wisdom, with every single decision that we make. So many times we like to know, as in being good, we like to know what's right. We like to know what's wrong. We like to know what's black. We like to know what's white. We like the cut and dry of it all. And a lot of times we like that cut and dry and black and white of it all because it really does help us get to the place where we can make a decision if you want to live a good life. But God doesn't just want us to live a good life, but he wants us to live that life of wisdom. So some things in many situations in our life really come down to making a wise decision decision. Again, many times we want to know, but is it wrong if I do this? And I will fill in some blanks. Is it wrong if I drink? Is it wrong if I look at porn here and there? Or, you know, like just on the verge of porn? Is it wrong if I go to the casino and gamble a little here, a little there? Is it wrong if I do everything physically with my boyfriend or girlfriend, but sex, is that wrong? And so many times, and so many times I've had people come and ask me, but is it a sin? I just want to know, is it a sin? Is it a sin if I drink? This scripture says, wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and everyone who's led astray by it is not wise. So he doesn't say it's a sin, He doesn't say it's not a sin in this specific verse. And again, everyone wants to know, but is it a sin? Especially in this young adult age when you just get out of your parents' house or maybe you're still in your parents' house, but you're in this place where you're making your own decisions and you come to this place where your parents can't really rule over you anymore and you want to know, but, you know, is it a sin? It's time to not just be good people, right? Because anyone can live, if you're just living by this is black and this is white, and if your life has no gray area, kudos to you. But life has a gray area. There's so many unknowns in this holy Bible. And how do we know how to live a godly and a Christian life? How do we fulfill the calling that God has on our life if we don't have wisdom inside of us and we just live as a good person. I want to give you a couple definitions. Wisdom, it says the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. I saw someone post something on Instagram the other day, and it was about wisdom. And as the whole post was about wisdom, they kept talking about knowledge. And I'm like, dude, you're a pastor. It's not the same thing. There is a huge difference between wisdom and knowledge. Knowledge is facts, information and skills acquired by a person through experience or education. The difference here is knowledge is an accumulation of facts and data, however you acquire them. Wisdom is the ability to discern and judge. God wants us to come to a place where we have this relationship with him, that we are able to discern and judge what we should or shouldn't be doing. If you are in a relationship with someone Hopefully, you get to the place where you could say like, yeah, my husband doesn't really like that. My husband wouldn't really appreciate if I do that. Now, can I go and flirt with a guy? Is it a sin? I know you're going to use the scripture that says, even if you commit adultery in your heart. But you know what I'm saying? 
But all I'm saying is, if I do that, it may not be a sin, but how many of you know my husband probably wouldn't appreciate if he's standing over there and I'm like, oh, hey, I don't even know how to flirt anymore, but whatever it is that you do, how many of you know that my husband probably wouldn't appreciate that, right? Wisdom is the ability to discern and judge. Good people may know the laws of the Bible. Good people may know the black and the white, but what happens when we come to a place that is a gray area in our life, in decisions that we have to make in our hearts? Wise people, again, can discern right from wrong in their heart because they know the heart of God. They know him, and they know what he would and wouldn't want us to do. And it's not so we can't have fun, but I like to gamble. I like to drink. I like to have premarital sex. Whatever it is, these laws or this right and wrong or this wisdom to discern things, he doesn't put these over us so we can't have fun. He actually places these in place in our lives so we can fully become everything that he's created us to be. The difference between being good and being wise. And you have to decide today, and I wish I could decide for you, but I see this place being filled with people who are full of wisdom. People who have wisdom beyond their years that people would say, how is it that you know what decision to make? And it's like, man, I know God and he's filled me with this wisdom. A good person follows the rules. A wise person follows Christ. That's the difference. Do you want to be a good person who follows the rules or do you want to be a wise person who follows Christ? Many people proclaim to be Christians, but the definition of that is a Christ follower. So if we're following the rules, we need to be followers of Christ. Matthew 23, 27, 28, it says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you're full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Wisdom. Why we do what we do. Again, the insight to have this ability to discern right from wrong and wisdom that comes from really having a relationship with God. Because again, it's not just about knowing the rules, it's about knowing who God is. It's about your heart and it's about what's in your heart. In Proverbs 4, 4 it says, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. To know these things in your heart. The Pharisees and the scribes, they knew all the rules. They knew the black and white. They knew exactly what the scripture said. Yet they were full of lawlessness in their heart. That's why to really be a good person is just kind of like, you're just, you're a good person. You know the laws, you know the rules, and you're following the rules, probably because you just have to, or there's something inside of you that just likes to follow rules. Trust me, I was born a rule follower. I am, I'm like, I mean, if my parents said don't do this, I did not do it. I don't even know why I was wired the way that I am, but I'm a rule follower. But there had to be a day that it was like, okay, why am I not doing these things that I was told not to do just because my parents told me not to do them. I'm like 18 freaking years old. Like I got to figure out why I'm not doing these things, right? So I had to get to this place where I build a relationship with God and say, man, I'm not doing these things because these things hinder me from becoming everything that God has called me to be. I'm not doing these things because they draw me into this place of insecurity or they draw me into this place of depression or they draw me into this place where I'm chained or in bondage to something that doesn't allow myself to experience freedom. The scribes and Pharisees, they knew the laws, they knew the rules, but... It's not about just knowing the laws and knowing the rules, but really the why we do what we do. Life is not just being about being a good person, but becoming everything that God has called you to be. I want to read to you 1 Kings 3, 1 to 28, so bear with me. It's a good story, I promise you. 
Now Solomon made a treaty with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married Pharaoh's daughter. Then he brought her to the city of David until he had finished building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall around all Jerusalem. Meanwhile, the people sacrificed at the high places because there was no house built for the name of the Lord until those days. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father, David, except that he sacrificed and burnt incense at the high places. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was a great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, this is the good stuff, ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, you have shown great mercy on your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth and righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on the throne as it is this day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant, me, Solomon, king instead of my father, David. But I'm a little child, and I do not know how to go in or go out. And your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? This speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and you have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked for the life of your enemies, but have asked yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your word. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart so that there has not been anyone like you before you or after you. And I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall, be, there shall not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. So if you will walk in my ways and keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. Solomon awoke, and indeed it had been a dream, and he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, offered up burnt offerings, offered peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. I want to read the rest. This is called Solomon's wise judgment. Now two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him. One woman said, O my Lord, this woman and I dwell in the same house, and I gave birth while she was in the house. Then it happened the third day after I had given birth that this woman over here, she gave birth, and we were together. No one was with us in the house except the two of us in this house. This woman's son died in the night because she laid on him. So she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your maidservant slept and laid him in her bosom and laid her dead child on my bosom. When I rose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was dead. But when I examined him in the morning, indeed, he was not my son, whom I had born. Then the other woman said, no, but the living one is my son and the dead one is your son. And the first woman said, no, but the dead one is your son and the living one is my son. Thus they spoke before the king. So King Solomon said, the one says, this is my son who lives and your son is dead one. And the other one says, no, but your son is the dead one and my son is the living one. And the king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king and the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. The woman whose son was living spoke to the king for she yearned with compassion for her son. She said, oh my Lord, give her the living child and by no means kill him. But the other said, let him be neither mine nor yours, divide him. So the king answered and said, give the first woman the living child and by no means kill him. She is his mother. All of Israel heard the judgment which the king had rendered and they feared the king for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. King Solomon could have asked for the world. God said, whatever it is that you want, let me know and I'm gonna give it to you. And he said, I want wisdom to discern and to discern and do justice, to judge justice, whatever the words say. Solomon asked again for this understanding to discern justice. And this story is just so crazy to me. He could have been a good king. And I'm sure he could have, you know, rendered justice any way that he pleased. But instead of deciding to be a good king, he said, Lord, I want your wisdom. And not just like wisdom of like having good judgment based on like other people. 
God, I want your wisdom to discern good and evil, to rule your people. We need to ask for wisdom, Lord, to rule in our hearts so I can make good decisions over my life, so you can make decision, good decisions over your life. All these different things, we need to ask the Lord for wisdom. In Proverbs 4, 11 to 13, it says, I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, wisdom that is, for wisdom is your life. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Has anyone ever heard that phrase? That never became so true until I had a daughter named Lael. I can, anything, anything. I can, like, tr I can't make her do almost anything. I could sit her down and try to force her to eat. If she doesn't want to eat, it ain't happening, right? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. We have to realize that we know these things. God has given us wisdom. God has placed himself in our heart, Jesus Christ lives in our heart, and that's how we have this ability to discern what is good and what is evil. That's how we have this ability to discern right from wrong, not just based on black and white or good and evil, but these gray areas in our life. There has to come a time in your life where you start making decisions for yourself. Now, again, I'm a rule follower. So I like to know what's black and white because it tells me what I can and can't do. Then all of a sudden you get presented with things in your life where there is no right and wrong and you just have to make a decision. See, I came to this place and I just wanted someone else to make the decision for me. It would be so much easier if someone else could just make the de this decision for me because then if it doesn't work out, I can blame someone else. If it doesn't work out or it does work out, I just don't really have to take the responsibility of it all because I just want someone else to make this decision for me. But when we have wisdom, we're able to make the decisions. How about what school do I go to? There's no right and wrong. It's not like, oh, if you go to U of M, God definitely told you what to do. If you go to state, uh, right? I don't know. That's the bad. You know what I'm saying? When you are presented with what school you're going to go to, there is no right and wrong. When you're presented with what job to take, there is no right and wrong. Now, obviously, if it's like, oh, I need to be in finance or I'm going to be a pimp, maybe there's going to be right and wrong. You know what I'm saying? But in general, there's no right and wrong in so many decisions we have to make. Who am I going to marry? Lord, just tell me. Just tell me, God, I don't want to make the decision on my own because if I make the decision, what if I get to the place where it's like, oh man, dang, I made the wrong decision. Lord, just tell me what to do. I came to this place. Oh man, this is like the dark place of my life and I'll just be really open and honest with you tonight. I don't even know what I was thinking. We don't need to even need to get into all that right now. But there was a time that Mike and I were not dating. And I started dating this other guy. And I was just like, ah, oh, you know, this is like so great. Why are you cheering? <laughs> Aren't you rooting for Mike? Come on. <laughs> so you didn't know. So we broke up for like three months. And I started dating this other guy. And it was just like, man, this is like the best thing ever. He doesn't even live here. So I don't even have to deal with anything. Right? He lived in a different country. So... All this to say, oh, it's getting steamy in here. So, this, it was just like, you know what I mean? I don't know what was happening, but all of a sudden I was like, this is not what I, this is not good. I don't know what's going on. But I was like in this place where I already, I'm just, whatever. I was in this place where I already filed for him to try to come to the United States. So I was like, that cost me money. Um... Uh, it's just so many different things, you know, but I'm stuck in this, like, you know, when they say stuck between a rock and a hard place. I was in that place, right? We took a trip to Peru, a different country, and I was in Peru, and I was just praying, and I was like, dang, man, this is not what I'm supposed to, what? <laughs> what was I doing? I knew I wanted to marry Mike for six years, 
but we never got married, so I just had to do something else, but this is definitely not what I'm supposed to be doing, but now I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. So I started talking to Pastor Ruben in the back of a cab, and I was just like, I don't know, I don't, I, don't, I don't even know. This kid has, like, emailed me 18 times when I asked him not to email me, and then he keeps trying to Skype me, and I told him not to do this. Ruben, what do I, I just don't even know. And he's like, man, you got to figure that out. So I just keep praying, and I took the flight back with my dad, and we had a layover. And I was just like, my, I'm, I'm like sweating, my whole body's shaking. I'm just like, Pops, I just don't know what to do. And I'm like, I need you to tell me what to do. Like, I don't even, I don't, I don't even know how I got to this place. Like, I, but I don't know what to do. Like, I've already applied for him to come to the country. And I don't even know if, I, if he gets accepted. He's just gone. I don't know what's happening, right? And I was just like, Pops, I don't know what to do. And he was just like, let the peace of God rule in your heart. I'm like, mm-mm. Nope, I just said, what am I supposed to do? You're my dad, you're my pastor, you're supposed to tell me. And he was like, I raised you, and I know that in your heart, you know what you're supposed to do, and I'm not going to tell you. And I'm just like, oh, man, like, you know, it was in that moment, I just wanted him to make a decision for me. I wanted it to be black and white. I wanted him to say, break up with him, you idiot. But he didn't tell me that. So then I'm just like, ah, you know what I mean? Long story short, my husband's in the back of the room. His name is Mike Garza, and he's from the United States. So we have so many decisions in our life that are not going to be black and white. You all are probably living in one of those decisions as we speak. But if you don't have wisdom, how do you make a decision? How are you led by the Spirit, right? Right? It's that, it's that place that it comes down to. We have to make a choice in our life and to make the choice to really become. Now, again, is a different job that you take totally going to, like, change the course of life that God has for you? I don't know. I don't know what job it is, right? But this wisdom inside of us brings us to this place where we, we know God. He's given us the ability to make choices. He's given us the option not to just be a good person, to, but to live a wise and wisdom-filled life. Do you want that? Do you want that life? When I read this story about Solomon, I'm like, God, I want to be that. He found himself in the place where he said, these people are too numerous for me. These people are too great. How am I supposed to discern? How am I supposed to judge the people? Lord, give me wisdom. We're going to find ourselves in places, hopefully all of us, because the world's coming to a place. They need God. We need God. They need God. And we need to come to that place where we can, we can say, Lord, there, there's so many of them. They're too great a people because when you watch the news, when you read your little Twitters and Instagrams and all that stuff, it seems like the people who really don't believe, right, who are living a natural, worldly filled life, it seems like they're too great. How would we ever have an influence on them with the wisdom of God? If you want to impact people, impact them by the choices that you make, impact them by the life that you live, impact them by the wisdom that God has given to you because he's led you to this place. It says, I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right path. Here you are. You wouldn't be here if God didn't have a call on your life. We're yearning. We're all yearning for something. If you want joy, you're going to find it in the Lord. If you want satisfaction, you're going to find it in the Lord. If you want healing, if you want peace, if you want joy, if you want all these different things, you're going to find it in the Lord. Can I have the musicians come forward tonight? I like this next verse. It's simple. How many of you guys like simple verses sometimes? You don't have to like read between the lines. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to you. Simply ask. You may find yourself in the place like, well, how do, how do I give wisdom? You're saying that God gave me wisdom. How do you get wisdom? Simply ask for it. If any of you lacks wisdom, ask. He wants to give you a wise heart. 
And I don't say a wise mind because that's knowledge. It comes from this place right here that it's like, man, I know that I shouldn't be doing that. Man, that is what I should be doing. It's those gray areas that wisdom gives us that discernment. 